good evening all welcome to the webinar session conducted by ss healthcare uh, participants dear participants kindly mute to get a good audibility of all our uh, speakers thing and this is a webinar session specifically that we are conducting as a service for the research and pg students who want to understand the opportunities that are available in the health sector mainly and also in the technology wise why we need to update ourselves in the current scenario even you complete your pg or complete your research work you must also understand that the big tech companies are coming in picture who are entering into the healthcare sector so we need to equip ourselves so this particular session of the webinar uh, by dr prem sundivakam who is not who is very familiar to us last time he gave us a talk regarding this so he is going to just inform us how to enter in the healthcare sector with the technology as one of the equipment or how to equip yourselves so a short uh, a short presentation i need to give in this point of view so this webinar as i told you is sponsored by skytes pharma service private limited skytes pharma services private limited is us fda approved organization a clinical research service center who does clinical research service to the pharmaceutical and biopharmaceutical industries and they do conduct studies on bioavailability and bioequivalent studies in healthy volunteers they have permission to do the study in healthy human volunteers and that uh, hospital and the center both are located in chennai the bioanalytical facility has latest state of art sophisticated bioanalytical equipments which includes all water zero tq xs and tqs tqs micro and tq systems and a host of supporting equipments and in in instruments and it infrastructure we have to understand they are fda approved so you know they need to satisfy all the requirements of the fda the clinical facility is equipped with all necessary infrastructure that meet the current regulatory requirements and ensures subject safety and comfort because they are doing on the human volunteers so sps is pulled together scientists and clinical team and have conducted more than 400 bab studies in uh, uh, clinical research in addition to this they have an experience of running patient based bab studies and clinical trials in various therapeutic areas from phase 2 to phase 4 sps supports also the life cycle management of generic drugs or generic drug products of pharmaceutical companies by providing comprehensive pharmacovigilance solution that arts with medical information call center to the submission of report and also they do risk assessment and signal detection the pharmacovigilance division as a team of experts and i am the i am also as a member of our audit have visualized all their infrastructure which is pretty good and it's really competitive and i am entering into the clinical trial of the of their division and the team has an experience of successfully completing several regulatory inspections including dcgi us fda mh RA ANVIC and NPRA it has achieved a niche name in the field of clinical research within a span of 4 years thank you uh, thank you skytes pharma service for sponsoring this program thank you so regarding ss healthcare you all know very well uh, and uh, uh, some newcomers may not know so kindly bear with me others and uh, uh, ssl care was started as an initiative of clinical research so i started mainly to do the clinical research to support the nutraceutical pharmaceutical and herbaceutical and biotechnology product uh, produced by the industries and uh, recently we have also started the educational support service to help the people in the research and also we support the researchers and bio entrepreneurs to grow from ideation to venture 
and some of the services conducted by SSL care in this regard is we do clinical trial service and uh, clinical research along with the other uh, pharma companies who approach us to do the validation of the products. We help them in approval of IEC and documentation up to statistical analysis of data and also we do publish uh, we also have done the artificial intelligence project. Recently, we completed two. One is going to enter into the European market. And that was produced, I have already told, that was produced by a women entrepreneur. Uh, 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 she is from IIT Chennai. And in the educational sector, we are conducting frequently online classes, webinars, and workshops. Especially, my aim is to help the students to understand the techniques that is available to them in the laboratory. Since during this lockdown time, many of the students do not have the facility to do the uh, lab work. That is the main aim or objective of my service. Apart from this, we do statistical services also. Uh, Dr. Kala Anand, my sister, is a statistical person. And uh, we do IPR services up to copywriting. And we have a IPR service center also. We do conduct classes. Mrs. Shakira is the IPR person. We have organized as a women team specifically for this purpose. Then apart from this product development, we help companies if they have their idea and want to know more about how to produce it. We do help them by giving their uh, what are the things they have to carry out. So uh, as I told you, start up there for the entrepreneurs. So our next webinar series six is for students, specifically UG and PG, who want to understand about the RT-PCR in COVID-19 detection, where uh, we are going to show the extraction of RNA from the COVID sample, preparation of master mix, programming and data analysis, along with the primer uh, selection or designing. So this is our program schedule, which is on 31st. So if you are interested, you can attend. And some students have requested me to do the cell culture technique again. So based on the number of participants, we may do it in the uh, maybe tentatively in the August, on the August 1st week, I suppose. Anyway, I will inform you if there is a need. So this is about uh, the SSL care. And also, uh, last time I was not able to tell you this. So I want to put this also in the platform. We are conducting mentorship program for PhD and PG students, one-to-one -one mentoring program to establish a promising career in life sciences and healthcare sector, along with Dr. Prem Sundivakam in this regard. Please contact us for further details if you are in need of it. As you know, this is my email ID. If anybody is in need, please do approach me. I will help you. So thank you. Now I request Arvind, Arvind to introduce, yes, to introduce our speaker, Dr. Prem Sundivakam. Thank you. I am indeed delighted to introduce the guest of guest today, Dr. Prem Sundivakam. He is Director of Medical Affairs and Communication at Estella's Farm. Dr. Prem is a subject matter expert and a thought leader who is committed to developing effective medical strategies and scientific content with actionable insights. He has studied and practiced science because he has always been motivated to create things that are newer and better. He strongly believes that his tra training prepared him to be an adaptable problem solver and capable of taking on a wide range of demanding assignments with little assistance. For more than 17 years, Prem has successfully led numerous medical excellence programs and has established new value creation opportunities to provide the right information to the right people at the right time. In the long term, he is interested in identifying the structures, processes, and capabilities that are essential to improve the stakeholder engagement. While working towards developing the core value added, added activities in medical affairs function, the activities include, but are not limited to, addressing how to embrace the power of technology to position science and to inform their interactions with stakeholders, how to maximize the role of real-world data to improve scientific excellence, and to build strategic leadership know-how to achieve strong partnerships. Prem 
has a PhD in pharmacology and vascular biology from the Tamil Nadu Dr. MGR Medical University, India. He received his MBA from the University of Illinois at Urbana Champaign with concentrations in strategy and leadership. He has published over 25 highly cited peer reviewed assistant transcripts and has served on editorial review boards of several journals. He was a distinguished fellow of American Heart Association and American Endodontics Association. Frame leveraged his expertise to serve at several professional and non profit organizations. He has held committee appointments and memberships on advisory councils to promote innovation and community engagement. During the COVID 19 pandemic, he founded an online music school to support the families of 27 visually impaired musicians in India. Thank you, and it's the stage is over to Dr. Prem. Thank you. Thank you, Aravind. Uh, just a minute, Dr. Prem. Somebody has raised their hand. Uh, is there in, uh, anything to be informed? There is some internet issues because of uh, heavy rain that is uh, happening here. It will be now settled. Yes, okay. Dr. Prem, over to you. Okay, thank you so much. And um, I hope you see my screen, right? Yes. Okay, wonderful. Um, yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure to be here this um, evening. Good evening, everyone. and. Um, this is Prem Sandhivakam from Chicago. I'm, <clears throat> I just woke up on a Saturday morning, a beautiful day, and it's not raining here, so it looks sunny outside. So again, um, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sheila Sasikumar and SS Healthcare for this wonderful opportunity to connect with all the students and like, you know, uh, young professionals here. And uh, like I said, it's an absolute pressure always. What are my goals? Um, why I am why am I here, first of all, and why I'm doing this kind of a series of seminars, I know at least the second time in a row, right? Um, obviously, everyone will have this question. So my, my, my objective basically is to bring awareness to the young professionals in this, in this life science community. You know, there are a lot of emerging opportunities. I'm sure like you're mostly blindsided because of your college work and your thesis and so on, but you wouldn't have an opportunity or you don't have someone to educate you on um, give you awareness on what's coming in the future. And so that's pretty much what I wanted to focus on in my life. And obviously I wanted to support these young uh, professionals and I, I wanted to actually work with um, identifying their potential because everyone have their own potential. Like uh, Dr. Sheila Ma'am was saying, uh, we, were, we are actually planning for um, a program, like a mentoring program. That's pretty much what I wanted to do in that program. So, um, yeah, well, this is not going to be a philosophical presentation, but I just wanted to start with this simple question. Um, so I would um, like you to give your answers in your message board, like message box, and no pressure, take your time. So if you have to start a business, let's say, for example, a restaurant business, what is that primary qualification you think one should have? Anybody? Please message in the chat box. Um, Sujanta has said it's customer needs. Wonderful. You hit the nail already. So I was having some surprises, but you already took it. So it's and fine. I mean, <laughs> not, and uh, many of them, I uh, Prem, they have answered customer needs. Yeah, I'm needs. seeing it. Yeah, yeah, please. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. So basic knowledge about the demands and market research. Mm. And, and I'm so impressed with all the responses because that's pretty much what I wanted to talk to you today. You know, you hit the nail and thank you so much. So, um, yeah, well, most of us think we have been thinking, at least I was thinking when I was like you in, uh, like 20 years before, like the, the primary qualification is to have money to invest in the business, you know, and to know about the business and work hard. But since you already stole the surprise from me, to, to be successful and to beat the competition, obviously you need to know your customers, right? Um, well, like Suchandana said, like you need to know your customer needs, how they are different from others, like what actually they're expecting, uh, what they are looking for, different from other restaurants available in their community, right? How can your restaurant meet that increasing need or demand, right? So this, I mean, most of your answers reflect what I listed here. And like I said, you really understand the need. You really understand what you need to do 
to be successful and to beat the competition, to stay above the competition. Um, so yeah, the primary qualification we all have, I think the reason why we are here today, like 75 of us are in this meeting today is because we all have this primary qualification. We all have master's or PhD degree. We are equally smart and you have worked so hard um, to, to get here and you all understand and interpret science. There's no doubt about it, you know? So, but that's not, that's not enough, unfortunately. That's not enough. That was 20 years before. That's more than enough to be um, having a primary qualification that would get you a job. But if you want some promising, fancy, and interesting and exciting job, you definitely wanted to do something different. You need to see a bigger picture. Like, you know, now it's globalized. Everybody can work from anywhere in the world. And you are in Chennai right now. I am in Chicago. And it's raining in Chennai, but we are, I mean, it, it's in Chicago in the morning. We are able to connect. So that's how the globalization has uh, grown so far in the recent years. And you need to understand the change that's coming in whatever the sector you are, in your case, life science sector or healthcare sector. You have to be open. Like, I'm sure you're all open. That's the whole big reason you're here on a Saturday evening. You could do a lot more things on a Saturday evening, but you decided to be here because you're open to learn. And obviously, you need to identify your strength. You have your strength. Everyone has their own strength. But you need, to, you need to tap onto it. You need to understand what exactly your strengths are. I'm going to start this, um, this mantra, I would call. I mean, um, this, who said this? It's me. I don't know if you like it or not. This is exactly what <clears throat> I see a raise in hand. Does someone have a question? If you don't mind, um, can we wait till the end? OK. So um, in, my, in my case, in, if I, if in my perspective, establishing your career is no different from starting a new business, right? So you need to understand the market and you need to understand the demand. It doesn't matter if you open a restaurant or a grocery store or um, a supermarket or you want to become a PhD professional. You need to understand um, your, your market and the demand, what's coming. Again, um, my name is Prem Sundivakam. I know Arvind did a wonderful job introducing me here. So I've been a scientist, I've been a teacher, I've taught in um, several programs in the medical school in US, and I've been a consultant, and uh, these are my credentials. And <clears throat> so I wanted to segment my presentation into three parts. Uh, let me just move my screen so I can see my screen too. So, um, <clears throat> I, so, like I said, I'm, I'm actually splitting my presentation into three different parts. One, I wanted to show you some examples about what big tech companies, when I say big tech, they are like Google, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, everything what you are so familiar of these days. And I wanted to show you also some information which I have about why they are looking for life science candidates. Why do they think like life science candidates, like you, are important in this? Uh, in this uh, arena, in this space, in this um, era. And how can you be that candidate? You know, that's more important, right? So that's pretty much what my goals are today. To start with, big tech and life sciences. I also split this into like four different simple sections just for the ease of, um, um, to, geez, just to help me understand and tell you the story better. Like I'm all trying to do today is to tell you the story. Why is big tech interested in healthcare, right? Like you need to understand that for sure. I mean, I'm sure like you all know that, but I just wanted to give you some examples on why big tech is interested in healthcare. What is the need for big techs in health? Do we really need big techs? Like do we need Apple? Do we need Google or Amazon to be in the healthcare? Um, so that's something we need to understand as well. And we also, I mean, I also wanted to show you some, like, um, some ongoing initiatives by all these uh, companies and when I say like um, the big tech companies, it's not just those four or five companies, which I was saying, like it's more than that, but these are the most familiar companies you're all aware of. And what are the changes big techs are bring, trying to bring into the healthcare? So what, what they think they can do different from others, right? So when you open a restaurant, what do you want to know that you can do something different than others can do so that you can be successful? Let's get started. Um, so why is big tech interested in healthcare, right? In US alone, the annual spending to the healthcare has increased to $3 trillion, like which contributes to almost 38% globally. So you can imagine like how much money is being putting into the healthcare and life science research. 
So it's going, so why um, this big techs are interested in healthcare again, is because there is a significant changes in the systematic lifestyle, right? Like there's a lot of aging population. There's increase in the healthcare data because we're all using digital platforms. And this, it's the, the administration, the management is getting more complicated these days. So definitely we needed the big techs. I'll show you some examples what I mean by that. And obviously we all are in a fast mode all the time. We don't have time. We don't want to wait for something. We want answers immediately. If you need a, if you have a question, you post it in Facebook, you are um, going to look back in two minutes to see if someone, someone answered to that question. So you are so impassioned, like everyone here is. Um, so obviously everyone wanted some safety and transparency. We don't want to believe in the papers anymore. We wanted like every safety and transparent communications between each and every one. And more importantly, the growing generation like you, you demand for complete control. You don't want someone else to control your health or what you do for your living. You want to control yourself, right? That's, those are the major things that made Facebook so successful, Apple so successful, Amazon so successful, because you want to you wanna buy your own stuff from home. It doesn't matter if it's raining, doesn't matter if it's pandemic, but you want to order things from your home so you can go to Amazon, buy yourself, and that's it. Like you don't have to go to a supermarket, you don't have to do anything different. So that's how the, country, the, the, the younger generation is looking to live in the future. And what's India doing in this case? To be honest with you, India is doing wonderful in healthcare and life sciences. There, I, I, I can see like, like a significant portion of uh, stake that India is taking these days in healthcare and life sciences. They're trying to um, be the, in the front run. Like they are planning to invest more than $370 billion in the upcoming years. I'm sure it's going to be more than that because of the pandemic. So um, it's, it's the government of India is increasing the healthcare spending to 3% of GDP by 2022. Like, like I said, these things have been um, well expected, but I'm sure like this is going to be more than what's been expected. And there's a lot of increase in life science professionals. Everybody, most of, there are a lot of, lot of experts in the last five to 10 years who jumped into the life science industries, especially like SS Healthcare who's doing a wonderful job. And health, I mean, <clears throat> there's a lot of things government is doing right now, so I don't want to get in detail about that. Let's get into the core of this presentation. So what is the need for big techs in healthcare? Obviously, like I said in my previous slides, to bridge the technological gaps right to bring the cost down because you don't want to spend too much on healthcare and also to have a convenience service offerings right and the global presence because facebook is all over like you're, you're all connected in linkedin i know some of you connected from last time and we have improved transparency because i can see you and you can see me and what i'm capable of so having said that facebook has i mean i don't have to tell you this data because you know better than me facebook has the most followers in the world. And Google is the leader in the search engine market, right? And Apple, again, it's, an, it's meant for innovation and technology. And Amazon, global presence. I can order things for you from here in Amazon, and you can order things for me here in US through Amazon. So that's how we are connected these days. And these companies, they know very well about the user sentiments, right? So that's where they are successful. I wanted to give you a few examples again, each industry, like especially Facebook, Google, Amazon, and Apple, what they're doing. These are some examples, and you can find them, find more coming in the near future, and uh, you'll be surprised to see that, why don't you be there to help them build that businesses, right? For example, Facebook, because they are connected to a larger population across the globe, they are developing an annual health exam app. You know, every screening what you do, including the cancer screening, or like lipid profile screening, or even the flu vaccine, the flu shot reminders, everything can be done through Facebook app, right? And that will be connected to your doctors. And that's something which they are doing. And the, you know, Facebook is also doing some COVID-19 tracking tool. They have been very successful in the last one year, especially during the pandemic, because they have done a lot of surveys to contain, how, to, to understand basically how to contain this COVID-19 spread in the, in, uh, globally. And um, there are a few examples. Again, I don't want to go through the list here, but I just wanted to show you these examples. I mean, you can find them all available online if you want to go read about uh, in detail. And Google, 
especially Google is is, is um, spending most of its money recently in a um, lot of lot of technology that can help manage patient health remotely. For example, Verily, you know, they're doing this miniature um, glucose monitors. You don't have to carry those big monitors anymore, the glucose um, checking in instrument. So um, they are also doing like adhesive patch, like a bandaid, where you can put it on your body, then it can monitor your um, you know, uh, temperature like up and down in your phone. So those are the technologies Google is also building, and they're also investing a lot of their money through Google Ventures in go genomic editing and all this personalized medicine and stem cell biology, transplantation, and so on. They're using a lot of artificial intelligence and so on. So there's a lot of need for life science people like you who, who can understand science better. And Apple, again, you know, you can imagine Apple Watch can do everything, right? Uh, and the one interesting thing I found about Apple Watch is that they can be used to detect the COVID-19 um, presence in the body, positive or negative. And Amazon, interestingly, because you all know that Amazon is a shopping uh, site, but it's actually investing in a lot of uh, therapeutics company, like a lot of pharmaceutical companies, right? So um, they, I mean, obviously their goals, all these companies' goals are to bring down the cost and make the service available fast and quick and convenient. Pretty much like what you order in Amazon, what you want to use the Apple products for and the Google for and so on. They wanted to bring that kind of um, service to you in healthcare, to the community in healthcare. So be ready for that. So again, what are the changes in the near future? When I say in the near future, it's like five years to 10 years from now, when you guys are ready in the market when you're actively working in, in the industry, in the healthcare industry, this is what you should know. You know, this community, this younger generation, especially the generation who was born after 1980s and 90s, they don't want any treatment. They don't want to go through any torturing treatment. They want a cure. They want to protect themselves. They want to have, um, uh, you know, a protection beforehand. They don't want to be treated. They are very clear about it. That's why you use your Apple Watch to monitor your heart rate and like all this stuff, right? And they wanted to be informed because they, those days are gone when doctors prescribe something, you don't ask him a question, you just go and buy the drug or, or whatever the drug doctor prescribes. But these days you want to know what the doctor is prescribing. And it's funny that everybody wants to know what vaccine they are taking. You know, in my 40 years of life, I never ask what company vaccine I'm taking. But now everybody is asking like what vaccine I'm taking, which company is making the vaccine. So that is the amount of awareness people have these days. And everybody wants to have a remote monitoring. This is the better education we can learn in our lives, especially during the pandemic that you don't want to go to the doctor anymore, especially in US or in Europe. Nobody wants to go to the doctor anymore. Everything is remote. Like we want to, we wanted to get everything through the remote. Like I guess it's also happening in India these days and personalized medicine. It's not like one size fits all, right? Everybody has to be treated differently because everyone's problem is different. So these are the things the big tech companies are trying to bring changes in the healthcare system and in also in the life science system. And I wanna jump into my second segment of my presentation, which is like life science candidates in big tech. Like I said in my previous slides, um, there's a lot of this space where big tech companies are more focusing on. For example, like patient centricity. They wanted to bring the patient engagement in the early stages of the product development, you know? And uh, for example, like the gene and cell therapy, that's pretty much what is more familiar to you because you're all experts in that and you are going to be an expert in that in the real soon. And data science, right? And, and bionic pharma. So all these spaces, that's what this big tech companies are focusing on these days. And as you see from this um, image here, in, in, in the early 2021 alone, this is the amount of money that's been invested in all this kind of technologies. You can see it's a jump of more than 2.2 fold, right? So it's only going to grow in the near future. It's going to grow more. In the last year, I mean, in, the, in this present year alone, in the last seven, eight months, you already have 25 fully funded and successful startups in US alone. It doesn't mean that there's no more. It means that 
There are hundreds and hundreds of other startups also coming up, but these are the 25 notable ones which has generated a lot of money. So what they are actually looking for, what kind of experts they're looking for, what kind of um, field or functions they're trying to fill. And obviously, yes, as you know, research, because you all fit in very well, and compliance, right? When I say compliance, it's regulations and, and quality control and all the uh, things. And development, clinical trials, what SS Healthcare is doing, clinical trials and clinical development and all those things. And operations. Obviously, like, you know, medical operations and everything that has to do with communicating the medicine or the science information to the community and also to the internal uh, uh, stakeholders. And of course, sales, because these days they're looking for more life science candidates to do, um, to do function in sales department because they don't want someone who doesn't understand science. They want people to understand science. They can, then they can talk science to their customers. So these are the uh, these are few jobs which I saw recently. Um, you can look up. You will see. You will be amazed to see a lot of information in this in the space. The, these are the job opportunities that's available in the big techs. You know, like I said, the job increase has gone up to threefold in the recent days, and big techs are investing more than five hundred billion dollars. You know, the, but the pharma is in, investing only two hundred dollars so far. Two hundred billion dollars so far, but. The big, the big techs are investing more than $500 billion recently. So you can see that the demand for life sciences, all like expert people like you, is only growing dramatically, like significantly. So these are some of the examples. This is not limited to the list I have here, but these are just examples. But like I said in the beginning, you all have the primary qualification, but what they're looking for someone to do is to have a problem solving skill and outside the box, box thinking. I'm sure you all have that uh, ability. And to go in a little more detail about what I mean by the expertise, like, yes, you all have the science background, but they want someone to have a knowledge to interpret the science, connect the science with the technology, connect the science with different fields, connect the science with the marketing, connect the science with the commercialization, and for the safety, for the efficiency and everything. And they are looking for someone to, to solve the problems. You know, there are a lot of problems to be solved. And there's no way you can get a degree to solve a problem because they are looking for someone like you, a subject matter expert who can solve the problem strategically. Right? And in, with the same time, at the same time, they want someone to work ethically because this is a medical compliance. They want someone to work ethically and, and have that mixed methods in them. And obviously, they are looking for someone with modern thinking. Like it's not old school anymore. So you guys are the best fit in the space, and you should be very proud and excited to be in this time of the the century. And this is an exciting time. And I'm guessing, I'm hoping that you all have a wonderful career in the space. And the last segment of my presentation, uh, I'm sorry, I'm pretty kind of rushing it through because. I don't want to keep you longer than what I promised. So I'm trying my best to see if I can cover everything um, so that I can give you more information and also give you some time to ask questions if you have any. So how can you be that candidate? Because you want to be that candidate working for Apple or Google or Facebook or any startup companies who's working with a cool idea, cool technology, right? I'm very inspired by um, this uh, quote by Sun Tzu, is one of the famous uh, Chinese military strategists and the philosopher like in the early years, in 500 BC or so. He says, know the ground, know the weather, your victory will then be total. I'm sure like he meant for the war field, the battlefield, but this also applies to the market, the, the, the life science market here, because you need to understand the ground. You need to understand where you're playing. You need to understand what the weather is so you can definitely win that weather. Like I said in my beginning, I'm kind of repeating this again, that you all have the primary qualification, but it's your choice which kind of business you wanted to start, right? You want to be starting the traditional business or you want to be in the flying colors. How you do that? Well, like I said, in the beginning, you have to realize the change that's coming in the industry trends. And you have to train yourself to think that 
I'm better than this. I can do this because I have this ability so that I can be a better fit for this, or this kind of an organization. And you have to keep yourself available for new opportunities all the time. Keep your eyes open. Look for opportunities everywhere. Opportunities are everywhere. Like all the big companies. I'm not just talking about the, the big techs right now, but I'm talking about all these consulting companies like Accenture or like BCG or whatever you name it, Deloitte. Everybody is looking for life science people like you with some modern thinking and, and um, you know, interested and excited to work in new challenges. So you have to keep that in mind. And how do you do that? Like, I mean, yeah, you can read a lot of literature, but I would suggest that you talk to people in that space talk, and understand what actually they're looking for, what they're um, interested in building in their company. And listen to a lot of TED Talks, like a lot of talks. Like, that's exactly what I do most of the times when I'm running or when I'm jogging or when I'm doing some exercise or driving. I listen to, listen to a lot of the TED Talks because that gives me a lot of ideas and a lot of new information, which I don't think I will get by reading a book, right? And also bring out your emotional intelligence and interpersonal skills because you guys are very well connected these days in Facebook or Snapchat or, I mean, yeah, you know more gadgets than anybody in my generation would know. So take advantage of those technology. You know, that's what is going to make you more successful. You will be surprised and you will be excited to know that all this cool technologies, what you use like Facebook and you've been in Facebook all day and you are in LinkedIn all day, you do use Google all time, right? And you, of course, most of you have Apple products at home and, and you use Amazon. They are getting into your space. And if you, if not you, who you believe is going to take over that space, it should be you, right? And you have to be ready for that. And um, well, like I said, transferable skills, like, you know, you have all the primary qualification. What are the transferable skills? I was just mentioning about listening to people and understand that and emotional intelligence and interpersonal skills and so on. What do I mean by interpersonal skills, right? And, and what do I mean by exploring and implementing? And what do I mean by self-management? I just wanted to briefly touch upon that. So these are the hard and the soft skills you would like to know and, and you want to better use that. So interpersonal skills, of course, the communication, because the companies are looking for someone with a science background and technological background, but still can communicate science to a non-scientific people, right? To someone who don't understand science better than you. So they want someone who can have a better communication skills, like better customer service skills and better, better listening skills. If you want to listen to someone who doesn't understand science, but still communicate the problem back and try to solve it, right? And the teamwork, leadership, and you all know this, like there's nothing new I'm saying here. You all have this. You're all working towards building this. But what I'm saying here is that your primary qualification is not the only thing you should have it in your resume. It's not the only thing you should project in your interview, but also these ones. And exploration, the skills related to um, exploration and implementation, the research and analysis. Right? You all do this in your, in your research internship or your thesis or in your daily job and everything. You pay attention to detail. Like everything what you do in the lab, you're working in micro liters. So you pay attention to that detail. That is the biggest skill. You'll be surprised to know that nobody in the world would have other than you. So that's the biggest skill. We all underestimated the skill, like I did. I did underestimate the skill, but that is the biggest skill, is the biggest strength I can have in my career, being a PhD, having been trained in the research side. And I have the, I mean, when I say I, we have the best problem solving skills. When your experiment is not working and you know that you should find another alternative way to find things to work. So that's the biggest problem solving skills that everybody in this world has, right? And planning an organization organization like you know you I mean you know how to plan a day you know how to do plan an experiment you know how to plan your thesis writing everything so you do all this planning so these are the skills you already have i'm not saying like develop it all i'm saying is hone it fine tune it sharpen it and you will get the success there and when you apply for a job bring these skills in your resume give them examples and tell them like how you pr solve the problem in one of your small projects you did in college or in your PhD time, or like, you know, 
um, in other uh, labs you worked in. And you tell them a small story, how you planned something which actually helped you become successful. So those are the things you have to bring it out. I think I'm saying it from my previous presentation as well, that just don't say like, I'm a master's student or I'm a PhD student. I don't have this experience, but I'm a fresh graduate. I'm interested, I'm excited. Of course, everybody is interested and excited, but you have to tell them the story why you're excited, how they know that you're excited. You have to give them that sh that some examples. We all have stories to tell. And the self-management, that's another thing which we all have as a PhD and research candidates, right? Uh, like masters or PhD candidates. So learning, improving, achieving. Like you're here because today, because you wanted to learn, you wanted to improve, you wanted to achieve something, you wanted to do something better than anybody else outside of the 75 people here, right? And you want to be adaptable and you want to be a driver. You want to be the one who's pushing things out. So creativity, confidence, like all these things, I'm not saying like these are the things needed for the job. I'm saying that these are the things you have already. All you have to do is bring it out. Find those examples, like real stories you have that can tell like how creative you were. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be in the research lab, but anywhere outside the research lab. So um, yeah, when you apply for a job in big tech, what well, these are the things you would like to know, right? What are the company's long-term goals? What they're trying to do in the near future? Don't look for today. You know, that's the biggest mistake we all did. And I did. I did in, the, in like 15 years before this is exactly what it did. I looked at the current need, but no, you should be looking at the future need. You need to know what the company is actually working on to bring it in the near future, in the next three years or four years or five years. And you want to know who are the people working for that company. If you wanted to work in Facebook or Apple or Amazon in India or in Singapore or anywhere in the world, you want to know what kind of people they hire and what they know that you need to know as well. You know, what do you want to uh, build yourself to? And you also wanted to know what people talk about Google in healthcare, about their one of their products, which I mentioned. And you want to know more about it because it's not just the company's mission, but also the public's vision, what the public is looking for. For example, if someone wants to know, hey, Google, you're doing great things here, but you know what? This is not solving my problem because this is a different problem. That's something you want to know because when you talk to an interviewer in the future, you say, you know, I see there is another problem which I think I can also help. So that's the kind of story you wanted to build. And you definitely wanted to know what is coming in the future. And the last and most important question is, why not me? Why don't they hire me? What is that I'm not telling them that I can do a better job here? If you understand that part, that's where you have the success in your career. You know, you have to understand what are the odds that I don't get hired for this role. I believe I fit perfectly. Then there's something they don't either understand or that you don't tell them properly that you want to make sure that you tell them appropriately. That way you have a better chance. So these are the questions you ask for yourself. Again, um, I'm not going to go through the slide because I showed the slide in my previous slide and previous presentation that I want, I, I always believe this as a smart strategy. Um, so you have to make a more specific and smart decisions to make your, um, you have to have some ambitious goals and you have to have your time set up and so on. So having said that, it's time for you to plan so you can be that candidate. You want to be that candidate. And we, when I say we, me or Dr. Shashi, or Sheila Sasikumar, we all wanted you to be that candidate. We're trying our best to see if we can help you on that. So going back to what I said in the very beginning, look at a bigger picture. Look at globally. Don't look at India. Don't look at Chennai. Don't look at Tamil Nadu, not just Bangalore or Delhi. Look at the global perspective. The companies are looking for people to work from anywhere in the world. In my company, I can work anywhere in the world. I can go to Chennai. I can live with my parents for a couple of months. I still can work. I can still be paid in US dollars. So that's where the, the industry has grown so far. They're very flexible. And realize the change in industry trends, like I, was said, like I was saying in the beginning. And be open to learn and change. And identify your strengths. If you can do all of this or most of this, you can be that candidate. 
Isn't that that easy? I know because this is not new for you. This is nothing you haven't earned in the last whatever the number of years you are being in the education system, right? You have done this all. All you haven't done, maybe, realize the need for doing it now. So you, when you start doing all these things, you can be that successful candidate and, and you know, what better you can do in your life other than working for an exciting company. And I want to um, uh, close my presentation with this quote again. I think the same quote what I showed before. So it's the, keep this in mind very strong. I keep this in my mind every day, even today. After 22 years in the United States, I keep this mind in my, um, this strategy in my mind. So establishing or building your career or improving your career is no different from starting a business. If you were to start a restaurant, what would you do? Do the same thing and think the same way. You have to understand the market and the demand. With that, I would like to conclude my presentation and uh, I tried my best to wrap it up quick so that you can have, I mean, you can ask some questions if you have any and these are my contact information. Some of you connected in LinkedIn last time. I'll be more than happy to chat with you. Um, like Dr. Sheila Sissikimar was saying, like you're, um, you're starting a mentorship program soon. I'll be more than happy to see if I can help someone one-on-one, uh, -on -one, um, you know, to achieve your goals. So this is my WhatsApp number. Text me if you have any questions. If you wanted to connect with me, I'll be more than happy to do so. And email me, whatever that works for you. And with that, um, thank you so much for the opportunity and open for questions now. Uh, any questions from the participant side? Uh, Adesh, uh, you can open your question. Uh, good, good, of, good evening, sir. Uh, thank you for your uh, presentation, sir. I would just like to say that uh, you have actually opened our eyes, sir, to be honest. I think uh, these things are not actually, we, we're not familiar with these things. And it actually kind of gives us a sense of direction as well. So thank you, sir. I don't have any questions I'm, as such, but uh, I would like to thank you a lot. Sir. I'm thank glad you. that was helpful. I'm glad that was helpful. Thank you, Adesh. Thank you. Um, can you see the chat box, Dr. Prem? I th yeah. Uh, well, Sujanta. Yeah, Sujan. Um, so Liz Benny also raised the hand, and uh, and I can answer Sujantana's, and then maybe open up for Liz. So Sujantana, your question is: If someone want uh, where to conduct a market research, what means would you recommend? I guess when you say market research, I believe you're talking about the job market, right? So when you talk about the job market, like 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 I was saying in my last presentation, um, you know, I mean, these are some examples about the big tech companies like Facebook and Amazon. The reason why I brought those uh, companies is because you're all familiar with that uh, names. But otherwise, there's a lot of ways you can do market research. And um, I don't know if I can cover everything here, but I'll be more than happy to connect with you offline. If you wanted to uh, WhatsApp me or email me, I can send you a lot of information on how you can do the market research and um, to find the jobs. So. Um, and with the interest of time, I'm going to move on to the next one. Uh, Sujantana, again, um, I'll be more than happy to share more information offline if you're interested. Uh, just email me or uh, WhatsApp me. That would be nice. Um, uh, so Liz? Benny, Benny has a question, I uh, believe. Yes, uh, sir. Dr. Hello. Pai. Sure. Benny, Benny, uh, Benny, is it Benny from Goa? Uh, this is Liz from Liz Benny. This is Liz Benny. Okay. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, sir, I'd like to thank you for arranging the session. Uh, my question is, uh, you mentioned uh, TED Talks. Are there any other platforms, any other YouTube ch channels or magazines or newspapers we could be reading to, you know, find out what is new, what the industry wants, like maybe Harvard Business Review. Are there any magazines or platforms you would uh, uh, share that yeah. we could... Uh, uh, thanks, Liz. That was a one, that was a wonderful question. I mean, thank you so much for asking that question because yes, you can. I think I was mentioning this in my last presentation too. But you can, every company, right, in, including Google or Facebook or any company, like when you go to the Accenture, um, Deloitte, or like BCG, and a lot of uh, consulting companies too, they're all trying to get into this kind of a market, right? So what they do is in their website they have white papers. 
So when they say white papers, they write an editorial, they write an article about what is actually coming in the future, what companies are looking to do, and what can be better in this field if we can build. So those are the other things you can read too, because that gives you a lot of information. Because someone from Deloitte, an expert from Deloitte would write, okay, this is what we do, and this is what is coming, and this is what Deloitte is trying to do, and this is why we think we should be there because we can be successful. So those are the other resources you can look into to, to get more information. But otherwise, if you Google it, there's a lot of things you can, so I don't know if you use Apple Music or uh, well, uh, Spot, Spotify or whatever. So if you use those things, there are a lot of um, uh, podcasts too. You can also listen to a lot of podcasts. I don't know what's available in India too. There could be a lot of podcasts with, which can give you more information. There will be a lot of interviews. If you go to YouTube or Spotify or Apple Music, there will be a lot of inter in, uh, interviews from different expert people. Like People will ask questions and they will give them uh, the, the recent trends and what's coming in the future and so on. In fact, I'm, I was also thinking, um, I was also discussing with Dr. Sheila Sasikimara about doing those kind of sessions in the future, bring more experts into the space and talk to them and try to help um, understand more about the space and, and educate you in the space. Yeah, there are a lot of resources. And again, if you want, um, you can send me an email. I can forward you some information. Uh, that way, like, you know, uh, you, can, you can get more ideas about that. Does that help? Yes, sir, it does. Thank you so much. Sure. So I see a few other questions. Um, soft uh, skills. Kasi is uh, our soft skills we can learn meanwhile, sir. So, um, so I guess, Kasi, your question is about what are the soft skills we can learn while you are in the school or in the college, right? So like I was mentioning in my previous slides, let me go back real quick to my slides. Oops, sorry. Well, these are the soft skills I was mentioning about. These are the transferable skills. These are the skills that comes from you, not from your college, not from your degree, not from your PhD, but from your own. You have interpersonal skills. You have all these communication skills. Because I grew up in Chennai, right? I grew up in Chennai I, until I did my PhD. So I know all these communication skills. I take the um, uh, uh, public transportation. I take the train. I go to college. I go to school. So I know how to communicate, right? I have the customer service skills. I worked in, in uh, small stores when I was a student. So I have those customer service skills. So those are the skills I'm talking about. I'm sure like everybody, uh, every one of you in this, in this uh, seminar, seminar or webinar knows about what I'm talking about. So those are the interpersonal skills, how to connect with people, right? And um, like these are the problem solving skills. You know how to solve a problem. If you're riding a bike and something goes wrong in the middle of the street, you know what to do next. That's the problem solving skills. But not everybody can do that. You think everyone can do it, but no, that's different. So, um, so all these things is what I'm saying about the soft skills, right? So this you want to tap into. If you are doing a small project in your MSc or in your PhD, or even when you're working in a research lab, you want to bring out that one example and tell people that what is that problem you had? Maybe you were running an experiment, you came into some situation, maybe your media is contaminated or maybe you know, someone put something wrong in your media. How did you solve the problem? How did you know that there is a problem? How did you know that you can solve a problem? What did you do and what made that one experiment successful? That is a story to tell. When you are interviewed by a company, they know that you don't have experience, but they know from that one example that you can solve the problem. So that's the, pro that's the um, kind of uh, uh, thing I'm trying to say. Like, don't underestimate. Like, I remember one question last time in my presentation was, like, we're all fresh graduates. Like, they're asking for experienced people. How can I tell? And like, what kind of experience I can tell? This is the experience. This is the experience they're, they're looking to hear from you. You tell them, like, I did not work, but I'm willing to work because I am a problem solver. I can prob the solve, uh, prob solve this problem, excuse me. Um, and you tell them that example, that one example you did in the research lab and how that project was successful because you were able to identify that problem and solve it appropriately. I hope that answers your question, um, Kasi. Is there anyone else? I think so. There are no questions. 
Yeah, like I said, um, always feel free to just um, email me, like text me in WhatsApp or like, you know, connect me in LinkedIn. I'll be more than happy to answer. And I know Dr. Sheila Sushikumar is also organizing a lot of events. So I'll be more than happy to work. Uh, Liz, I see your hand raised again. No, sir, that was a mistake. Oh, okay. I see um, Ishani Bose said, like, a very good Spotify podcast and bioscience talks by... Yeah, well, that's one example. Yes, there's a lot of... Um, so if you go to the podcast, there's a lot of people talk about, like experts talk about um, uh, like the recent trends, what's coming in the future, what uh, their company is doing, what they are doing for a new company. And, you know, so that kind of talks is what I'm saying. Like You're right, Ishani. That's exactly what I was saying. And there'll be more like that. Yep. Thank you, everyone. Um, I guess if we have no questions, and we already took more than 10 minutes of your time. Yeah. Um, back to you. Thank you, Prem. Thank you. Sure. So, uh, dear participants, uh, see, this is this is the relationship we are maintaining, me and Prem. See, it is not that once you complete your uh, studies. So now we are not maintaining the exact student and the teacher relationship it goes beyond that so this is how we need to stay connected with our network because it may be useful one day or the other so it is a sort of service that we are going to help the young ones to budding scientists to understand so i may not know everything you may not know everything so each one of us can pull together so that we learn. Learning is a process. It never stops until our death. It goes on. So this is how uh, we need to learn. So soft skills, as uh, Prem was telling us, it is, uh, it is really in need. As I told you, industry demands we have to meet in order to come out with the flying colors in the competitive world. So uh, as I said earlier, uh, along with Prem, we have started a mentoring session. So if anybody is interested, do uh, contact us in the email ID. We will really help you in this regard. And once again, thank you, participants. Uh, thank you, Prem. And also at this moment, I wish to extend my sincere thanks to Skytus Pharma Service who helped me to take this program and help me in all ways. So. Uh, students, we need to understand all the openings. So at times, this type of webinars help us to understand because it comes from the expertise, from an experienced person who have undergone so many things. So thank you, Prem. Oh, my pleasure always. Thank you, everyone. So shall we conclude it? Yes. Thank you, dear. Bye. Thank you all. Bye.